Well, good morning. I'm glad you're all here. As you can see, it's a little bit different. Those that are joining us online, it's going to be a little bit different for you as well. Uh, there's going to be three segments to this message. And uh, so after each segment, there'll be some links in, in the playlist there of the songs that we are going to sing here live that you can go and, and do that interaction in there and then go to the second uh, and third segment of the teaching. So it's, it's a little instruction for our online community. And with that said, let's get into it. Um, over the next two weeks, I want us to talk about worship. Um, the Webster's Dictionary defines worship as, one, to honor and to show reverence for as a divine being or subnatural power, two, to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. And often, we refer to worship as the song part of our service, right? That when we come to church, we worship when we sing, but you know what? Worship doesn't end when we start and end when we sing. Worship is really, as we even read, to honor and show reverence. We show reverence and honor to God in everything we do. When we go to work, and we work as though we're working for God and do it to the best we can, we're showing honor and reverence to God. Um, we, we, that's, that's the type of mentality we want to have. Uh, when it comes to worship. So when we come together on Sunday morning, we're worshiping when we walk in the doors, when we're greeting one another, when we talk and are encouraging one another. We are worshiping the Lord. When we're having phone conversations, we can worship the Lord. <laughs> um, uh, one of my best times I've ever had that happen, it wasn't me, it wasn't someone else preaching, and the pastor just stopped and says, you should know to turn off your phones. And that goes for everyone, even me. And he just pulls his phone. It was his phone ringing the whole time. And so it's funny. It's, it happens. We understand it's in our culture. It's not a big deal. Um, but we can honor and worship him in everything we do. And so um, the next two weeks, as we talk about worship, I want to narrow it down to talking about praise and what it means to praise God and how we can praise God. And the, there's different ways we can praise God. Um, what do you think of when you read the word praise in the Bible? This is a, not rhetorical. When you come across and it says, and praise God in, in one of the Psalms, what comes to mind? Lifted hands. Lifted hands? Just giving thanks. Good. Singing from the heart. Prayer. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah, it's, that's great. Those are all answers. Some of those are what we're going to specifically talk about. Uh, and so we understand that that word praise has lots of different meanings in it. Um, now, English is a limited language when it comes to defining stuff sometimes. For instance, I've used this example before, the word love. I love my wife, I love my kids, I love you guys, I love my dog, I love pizza, All right, I love tacos. Let's be real, tacos are better than pizza. <clears throat> Titus said no. Um, but, taco pizza, yeah. But we don't love, I don't love all of those things in the same way. And in the Greek, you'll have different words for that, agape, uh, kind of that general love and uh, choosing love to love everybody and embrace one another. And then you have words like philia, it's more like that brotherly love. And then you have like eros, which is that romantic love and things like that. So there's these different types of love, but we just say love, right? So um, this is the truth of the same thing with the word praise in Hebrew. And so over the next two weeks, we're going to look at seven different words that um, our English translation says praise, but if we read the word in Hebrew, it's saying something a little bit different. It's saying some of the things you guys have said. So we understand the word, um, but I want us to kind of think about that, and then we're going to practice those things these two weeks together. But I also want us to realize it's not just about when we come together that we raise our hands which is what the first one's going to be about, and, and someone, I think it's Jordan, said. Um, uh, we do it, but I want us to get the understand, and this is something, a lifestyle. We can do this at home, alone. 
Some of these that we'll talk about will be easier to do at home, more comfortable at home, and maybe really should be more done at home. I don't, I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Um, but at least for this week and next week, we're going to give you opportunity at least to participate uh, in these different acts of praise unto God. And that's the bottom line. It's always unto God. It is about God. And so that leads us to the first word. Um, oh, my shirt is changing channels on me. Let me see if I can back up. Uh, the first word is pronounced yada. To revere or to worship with extended hands. To hold out the hands to throw a stone or arrow. So you almost got that idea of that yes thing. I, I, it comes to my mind uh, only, only because they just won the World Series and they beat the Dodgers. And I'm watching them do their tomahawk chop. Sneaking braids, doing that, 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 you know, that, yeah, we're going to beat you, we're, we're whatever. But this, just this idea of victory and we got it, right? But it's this idea of just raising our hands before the Lord to lift them up. So, um, uh, there, here's the verse. It says, may the people praise, and that word there is that yada word. May the people raise their hands to you, O God. May all the people praise, or may all the people raise their hands. May they honor, may they celebrate, may they lift up to you. With this word of praise, as well as others, we will look at, we are given permission to not be reserved. When it comes to church, we don't have to just sit there in our hands folded in a very respectful, quiet manner. Now, there are, there are denominations that are very extreme that way to the point that they don't even bring in instruments. Everything is just vocally. And they have their reasonings and this and that for it. Um, but as we'll read through the different Psalms, you see there, there is... Reasons to make a racket, too. And it tells us to put, hit your cymbals and play your tambourines and, and all that type of stuff. Um, and, and so I'm not knocking that. And we're a fairly reserved congregation when it comes to... to, um, to, to huh? Right, and that's what I just said. Reserved. And, that's, and that's okay. But I want us to also know it's okay... To lift our hands. It's okay to stand or to kneel or to, to, do the, to take different postures. and it, It's okay. Now, I, I do want to preface this with, there's also, we're instructed in scriptures to do things in an orderly fashion. Because we're going we're gonna to look at some different stuff that might not be as orderly sometimes. And if that is not in the flow of what's happening in the service, then we need to check that. But for the most part, most of the stuff we're talking about is, is not a big deal. So to, to stand and to raise, those are all... They're, they're kind of symbolic of what's in our heart when we raise in our hands, right? And we raise our hands in life for many reasons. Um, oh, let me make this point. That there are other churches that go to another extreme on, on worship. Uh, where they're dancing and raising flags, and they're up front swinging flags and doing dances, and sometimes even choreographed with the service and all this. And again, nothing necessarily wrong with any of that. Uh, it's just a different, um, or, or it's, it's actually scriptural, and it's just the way they do it. And I'm not trying to say through this series, when we get done with this, we're going to be a, uh, a Jericho marching church. I don't know if you remember those or know that they used to get up and march around the church and kind of shout and blow the trunk, kind of like the reenacting the walls of Jericho. Um, or, or dancing around. I'm, I'm not saying, but what I want us to do is be free in our worship. And mainly, is I want us to really connect our heart and understand the importance of praising God. And I want it to be our lifestyle. Not just, when we, not just on Sunday mornings, but in our, in our car. Now, maybe you shouldn't raise your hands driving. You know, maybe you should keep them on there. But you can sing. We're, we're going to talk about singing loudly. You can belt it out and and. and for some of us, maybe that's when we should belt it out, <laughs> like me, when you're alone. No, and I don't believe that, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. We should always belt it out. Um, but we are to, to, to sing from our heart and to sing praise, to lift up hands and stuff. And so for um, us, I want us to, this, this next song we're going to sing, that I want us to raise your hands 
in the celebration. And, and for what reason? Let that be up to you. Because there are different reasons that we'll raise our hands. We'll raise our hands for help. Right? In the classroom, I need help. Um, I, I, I need the teacher to come and call on me and show me something. We, we, to get someone's attention or on the side or broke down, we need help. We raise our hands to get that attention. So sometimes we, and today, that might be your reason to raise hands. <laughs> God, look at me. I'm right here. I need some help. I'm raising my hands. Sometimes for victory, we'll raise our hands. Uh, sport event, watch a touchdown, a, a big basket made. What had, the crowd's hands go up. The player's hands go up. Uh, when something great happens, our hands go up just naturally. Um, and then the third and, and there's more, but another reason people raise their hands is surrender. You're in war. I'm up, raising, raising the white flag. I'm raising my hands, putting down my weapon. I'm coming. I'm, I'm a, some of us here might need to just surrender some things to God. And when we sing this next song, when you lift your hands, maybe you're just doing it to surrender or just to give thanks or just to ask for help. That's between you and God. So we're going to sing. Uh, oh, no, before we sing, I wanted to read a few psalms. And I was just going to ask, there's, there's uh, five of them right here, short ones or verses. I was just going to ask different people maybe to, to read it out uh, from where you're at. The first one is Psalms 28.2, and they'll be on the screen as well. So you don't have to, just to save time. Someone just read out 28.2. So there's an example of, for help. Psalm 63, 4. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. Psalms 88, 9. Anybody? Thank you. Psalms 134, verse 2. Lift your hands towards the sanctuary and praise the Lord. And then finally, 1 Kings 8, 22. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the entire kingdom of Israel. He lifted his hands toward heaven. And so that last one gives us an example. So we read cries for help, just cries for praise and giving thanks, victory. When you're giving thanks for something you're, that was a victory in your life, you're raising your hands. And so um, now we're going to practice this through singing a song, and we're going to sing Holy is the Lord. And uh, I just encourage you to do that from your heart, from where you're at, if you want to stand, whatever. Um, you're comfortable doing that, but I do want to encourage you to raise your hands this morning.